what's up guys welcome to 33 studios first tutorial i'm Muhammad Rabi. i'm a freelancer vfx artist and i would like to share some vfx techniques with you and that will be our first one so some people ask me on facebook how to achieve that hologram effect and make it look realistic actually holograms and sci-fi elements are the main reason why i started vfx i've been watching this stuff in feature films like iron man and that inspired me and got me into vfx so in this process we'll use two powerful software the first one is adobe after effects it's that great compositing and motion graphics tool and the second one is max and cinema 4d for creating 3d elements so first of all you need to know how the thing hologram works in real life because when you know the thing as it is in real life that helps you creating it in cg Physically hologram is a form of visible light, it's glowing, it's colorful and have some transparent and the degree of glowing or whatever it is you determine or your client or supervisor in work tells you how the final shot will look. So it's nothing that have a specific rule you should follow or you should stick on, it depends on your imagination. The second thing you need to know is the usage of holograms. In VFX, holograms usage is sticked into sci-fi stuff and mainly holograms used in high-tech computers. And that means you'll need to create a user interface with digital elements no matter how will it look, simple or complex or if there will be any type of reaction between the user and the hologram as I mentioned before, you decide this or you do what your supervisor or client tell you. I don't want to talk too much so let's see how to do this. Drag your footage into a new composition and edit the color adjustment from here and go to color settings and set the depth to 16 per channel. Y16, so when you're dealing with sci-fi elements or something that has glow, like laser, that's better for your set. So here's the kid, he's supposed to be looking at a hologram interface, here, and he's doing some clicks. So let's begin. Uh, the first thing I'd like to create, uh, I call it the container, that contains all the elements we gonna create. So from shape layers, make a rounded rectangle and draw here, sorry, make sure that you don't select your footage, here, and change the stroke color to something bluish, like this. Go to contents, rectangle and rectangle path and push the roundness up something like this and move the anchor point to the middle to the middle of this rectangle to make it easier you can use the proportional grid from here that helps you to know where specific is the center make it 3d and you'll need to know the perspective of the shot so let's rotate it a bit in y-axis and let's see when this should pop out here after he finished with his hand there are a lot of ways to make the entrance of this uh, I'd like to do uh, a scale scale with opacity so let's take k frames here and here and that will be our end k frame let's push him away and make the entrance about five or six frames and here it should be zero the scale So here it is. So let's smooth our end keyframe scale to make this look better. Select the keyframe and 
hit F9 on your keyboard let's see now it's better and more dynamic now we are gonna create the loading here around his hand create a new solid and go to the effect turbulent noise push the contrast up so set the blending mode of this to add or screen zoom in select the effect tint set the white color to red or bluish whatever you like I prefer blue so now this will be something like wave let's draw something like this push the feather up and add glow move the anchor point to the middle of it now do simple animation from down to up about three frames select the solid press P position and now starting from here from here move three or four frames and it should now trim this solid from start to end to like this and duplicate it make about four or five here till the container is popping out now let's see recompose those control shift c okay and set the blending again to add so here to avoid this we're gonna create a mask around his uh, hand like this and push the feather up that will give us a pretty look pretty good look of the ending let's add a loading bar create a new composition make the width uh, small like 50 and the height around 500 sorry the opposite create a new rectangle like this and grab your pen tool and draw a shape like this hit shift to be straight push the thickness up use the grid to reposition this now it's okay so we need this to be something like loading from 0 to 100 so go to your shape layer and add a trim path effect so trim path and trim path you have three options start and end and offset we're gonna we're gonna use start and end so let's see that the loading will take around two seconds so set the composition time to two seconds to 30 I guess and set the end in the first to zero and by the end of the composition to 100 now you have a loading great we gonna position this in here so let's name this loading and put it here so we're gonna make this a bit shorter so right click 
right click on it and go to time stretch more down so make the loading bar 3d and parent this to the container so drag and hit shift to take its position and rotation go back in there we're gonna give it the same rotation 356 sorry yeah now they have the same rotation let's move this in here good let's make this appears from 0 to 100 like this blending mode to screen and glow play with glow radius as you like and push the trans the opacity down a bit yeah good so when it finished we need to know to make some popping out some lights pops out from this so in the last frame in this we're gonna hit control shift D that will split our layer and go to the small one and right click time freeze frame so we'll make a pop out a pop out here and duplicate it drag it here duplicate again make the transparent of this 200 let's see now that's great let's add trim baths to this to make it complete by the loading complete and here go to trim path add trim path set a keyframe in here when the loading completes and when this start to appear we gonna set the end to zero let's see it now make this smooth and turn on the motion blur make the blending mode to add add some glow T opacity lower the stroke width Paint out now. We need to do some clicks in here. So, I have a good way to do clicks and easy create a new composition. Control N, make the width like the height the same value about 500. So, go to your shape layer, ellipse tool double click on it to give the ellipse the same size of our composition hit scale and scale this down a bit so we gonna create some wavy click it's about three four frames nothing higher so the composition time about 10 or maybe yeah 10 is good 10 frames duration and this should go from 0 to 100 in 5 frames so in the first frame is 0 uh, I don't think uh, 100 is good so we are gonna make, it, make this break the composition size like this and when it reaches here 
the opacity of it zero shift t and press shift to grab the two parameters here take a okay keyframe and here it's gonna be zero turn on motion blur duplicate it like this and let's rename the composition to click one go to our shot and see where he clicks here and drag this small this bit make the composition much larger size but we'll keep the ratio let's see this great so here's our glow to it push the glow radius up let's preview this good let's see where he clicks again and add it in here and another click in here so each click should open something or some element here I'm thinking about adding some text text box draw some shape like this and connect this to the click and with the trim path is we'll remove this so here here the click finished so the trim path should start from here add trim path so it starts here so the end here is zero sorry this should be the the start move about six from six to ten frames like this and the start should be zero and the end here we'll tweak it until we don't see this this is great so turn the motion blur on let's preview you can make your own uh, look of this but I'm giving you a concept let's change this color and do what we did add glow we don't see the red so I think it screams better lower the stroke width and make it 3d and give it the same value of our container and instead of this we can make a null object with the rotation information and and automatically parent each element to it and now we want to make the text here so when it forms text should start writing here select your text tool and write random things just a random letters and numbers change the color and make some color variation make it 3d and give it the same information so here we want to make uh, an entrance effect for this text so after effects giving us some cool presets and fast way to make your work faster go to animation presets text 3d text and here you have bunch of presets you can use i love the 3d flip and rotate so here it created a very fast and pretty good uh, animation select your layer and hit you to see where the effect starts from here trim it from here now we're gonna make some uh, some offset character offset 
and when the text finishes not from it finishes from the beginning take a keyframe in the character offset and by the end of this composition push the value up let's have a preview but before we doing the preview we're gonna set the glowing and blending to add glow review this so here here we see it's good let's move to the next step and now I'm gonna import some CG elements motion graphics made with Cinema 4D and it will have a separate tutorial part 2 of this to how to create them let's go to the second click maybe in here and drag our first one it's like an atom let's make the blending add add some glow bring the opacity down and here are a cool trick we're gonna create a solid add turbulent noise too and make an animation of the evolution of this put this under our atom and play around with the track mat settings if it doesn't work try to make this above our our element now let's test yeah now it works so we can see the turbulent effect good tint and put the tint before the glow and that step is important give it a bluish color reposition this in here as we did in the previous step after the click it should be a line going from here to here make sure we didn't select anything go to trim path do what we did again trim this to here and here stretch the keyframe more make our atom appears after this so when this line reaches here the atom should start appearing maybe from here so let's preview this okay that's good for now the last thing I want to talk about in this tutorial is to make some good look spinning lips create a new composition I'm going to be square maybe 10,000 a thousand by thousand create an ellipse scale it down bring the stroke up go to its contents and the stroke you're gonna something you're gonna find something called dash so every click and we'll split our ellipse into small parts smaller parts when you push this number up this number in the dash you have two options a dash and the gap here it's a dash and here a gap by pushing this up it makes the dash and the gap bigger and small this down will make them smaller so let's make this big and 
duplicate this layer and smaller the dash and scale this up a bit tweak these settings again until we get an acceptable look maybe like this scale this up again so duplicate this and make it a different color change the dashes options again as you like it's up to you now we're gonna make some rotation for this make the duration of the composition about three three seconds make a variation of values turn the motion blur on so here we are also you can play around with scale and uh, opacity so select them all and hit scale make a variation of the scale also let them all start from zero and make them appear one by one now add this to our shot let's name this spinning add it in here after third click and let's preview now let's see here we are gonna add some another CG element from Cinema 4D I will make what I made in the, fir in the first one add some glow and here I like to make some light gradient ramp gradient so let's make them a mixture of blue in red like this here and start by flashing control shift and make an empty frame between them like this control shift D again until it's stable let's see how this look so I'm adding these elements in the description until I make the second tutorial now we have something to make to make our shot look better so we can uh, here is a trick you can add solid and add effect called red to it make this in 3d add some mask push the feather up and the expansion down or up sorry tweak it as you like add glow to it sorry I forgot something you can't add mask to this layer as it is you should pre-compose it first sorry about that control shift C to pre-compose this move all attributes and now we can draw the mask correctly now it's good make this beer when everything appears give it more glow tint tint this to bluish maybe 
the last thing we need to add some optical flares you know sci-fi loves optical flares and here let's see a good one or you can customize your own maybe this I love this blending mode to add and push this away from your composition like this we need our slides only so also make make it appear here so keyframe the brightness press U go backwards some frames and set the brightness to zero also you can make another optical flare but we're gonna remove all of these elements and go to custom and add this one this gives us overall glowing like you see here give it blue color give it a mask Feather this up. Excellent. Give the same brightness settings, but make this a bit earlier. And now we have the overall color grading. You can use uh, Red Giant slugs. It's pretty awesome for doing color grading in After Effects, but we can use simple curves, make some contrast here. It's creative in it. Lips mask. Press MM. Invert this. Feather. Feather up. And expansion up. Like you see. Also, with all clicks, you can add an opt a small flare here. But now we're good till I make the second part of this tutorial. So let's see how the final result looks. Now that's good for now. I hope you learned something new or you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I'm not an English native, but sorry about if I have some mistakes in grammar or language or stuff like that. I hope you enjoyed this and keep updated. Follow our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for my friend Dina James for providing me with this footage. It's a shot from our new collaboration short called Boys, Boys vs. Bots. We're in the post-production right now. And thank you.